How do you use New Calgon's coil gun? This is a coil gun sprayer made by New Calgon. And if you're performing maintenance, you're cleaning air conditioner coils, you need this because it'll make your life a lot easier. No pre-mixing because this mixes all for you. And I'm going to show you how to use it. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad. Let's get started. I've got a few different types of coil cleaner made by New Calgon to choose from. Today, I think I'm going to go with the New Bright. So I'm going to open this up and I'm gonna show you how to assemble this and talk about the coil gun and the different mixing ratios and the mixing dial and how to set it up. But New Bright is what we're gonna go with for cleaning these coils today. Now I'm gonna show you how to assemble the coil gun. It's very simple, very easy. This right here is the two quart bottle. And then we've got our mixing head here. And we're gonna take and put this clear tube into our mixing head. Got a couple different tips to choose from. I'm gonna go ahead and screw the mixing head onto the bottle. We're gonna put coil cleaner in it, but not right now. I just wanna show you how to assemble it. You got the quick coupler so that you can attach that handle with the shut off. And then you've got the spray wand tip right here, the foaming wand, or You've got this deflector tip. If you want to cover a very large area, you use this tip. Or you can leave it off and then you can spray about 25 feet with no tip attached. No foam wand. So, I am going to show you the mixing dial now. So, no pre-mixing. All you do is put the chemical in the bottle and then you choose the mixing ratio. So, this right here is the, the mixing dial and it's set to uh, no uh, mixing so this is just rinsing the coil off right this is just water then you can go to a which is three to one you've got B four to one C six to one D nine to one and E ten to one each letter stands for a different ratio a different dilution and then when you get to this symbol that means uh, no ratio, it's just water, okay? So if you want to rinse the coil off, you choose that symbol there, or you can just disconnect with the quick coupler and rinse the coil off with just your spray nozzle. So now I'm gonna fill this up with coil cleaner, and I'm very excited because I don't have to use a pump-up sprayer anymore, so no pumping. When I get done cleaning the coil, I'll take the unused chemical and just pour it back into the original container because you don't want to store it inside of the coil gun bottle. All right, that's it. All right, I'm gonna fill this up, maybe a little less than halfway. All right, got it filled up. Now I'm gonna take the mixing head and attach it to the bottle. And I am going to attach the quick coupler and then we're going to use this foaming wand first this tip okay now I'm going to attach my water hose so simple oh wait I probably need to attach this first all right make sure it's tight and then attach that now you want to make sure the bottle stays upright Otherwise, you may have chemical loss. So you can turn the, the spray nozzle, but you need to make sure the bottle stays upright. All right, let's get ready to clean the coils off. For your safety, you always want to disconnect the power from the air conditioner that you're cleaning the coils on because you don't need live power while you're cleaning. That's not safe. For this particular package unit, there's a few things I'm gonna do before I clean. One is I'm gonna take these grates out. Then I'm gonna take this corner panel out and then I'm going to take and loosen or take the screws out for the fan. That way I can lift that out of the way and make sure I can clean not only from the outside in, but also from the inside out. We're also going to do a pre-rinse before we start with the coil cleaner. Got this corner panel off. Taking all these grates out of the way here. These guards, coil guards. And then we'll be ready to do our pre-rinse. 
always look inside these corner panels before you remove them because there could be a wasp nest. If there is a wasp nest, then you can use some of New Calgon's New Kill. This is wasp and hornet killer. This stuff is great. Now I got all the corner panels removed. I got the fan out of the way and I've got my water hose connected to my nozzle sprayer. Now I'm going to do a pre-rinse on the coil and remove all the leaves and get ready for the coil cleaner. Now I'm going to do a pre-rinse over the whole entire coil and in hopes to dislodge any of the material that's stuck inside the coil before I use the coil gun. Make sure you spray off the rain shield as well. And you can spray it, you know, up and down like this, or you can actually go through each channel of the coil. Whatever method you like. Now I'm going to remove the debris, the leaves inside of the unit. Pre-rinse has been completed. While using coil cleaner, it's a good idea to use some gloves and some safety glasses. Get all this stuff out of here. And if you don't clean the inside, you don't clean the top, then you're going to, one, not have a happy customer, and two, probably get a call back. So make sure you clean everything out because when we start spraying coil cleaner in here, you don't want this stuff getting inside the coil. Right. Now since we have this hole right here that connects to where the compressor is located, I'm going to have debris going in here as I'm trying to clean the outdoor coil. So I'm going to go ahead and take this corner panel off. That way I can wash that debris out. The reason we clean the outdoor coil is because the outdoor coil helps us to reject heat. And if it's not cleaned, it's not going to reject heat properly. Now the mixing dial is set to zero. I'm going to connect this. And you're going to see that when I spray it, no coil cleaner comes out, right? Now I'm going to turn the mixing dial to A. And that is going to do a 3 to 1 ratio. Look at that. Now I'm going to show you without the wand. Now I'm going to show you with the deflector tip. You can see the difference. Now we're going to spray the coil. That is awesome. This is a game changer. It's going to save you so much more time, so much easier. Now this is with the spray wand. Now we're going to take that spray wand out. I'm going to put the deflector tip on here so you can see the difference. And then I'm going to take the tip out and let you see the difference. After the coil cleaner sets on the coil for about five to ten minutes, then we're going to switch the mixing dial to the zero or we're going to disconnect the spray nozzle from the bottle and the mixing head and then we're going to rinse off the coil. So as you can see, I used up all that coil cleaner. So you gotta be careful. You gotta make sure that you're paying attention to how much coil cleaner you're actually using. This is my first time using this. So you're seeing my live testing and experimentation with this coil gun. It's really nice. I did not realize how much coil cleaner this thing will spray out. It sprays out so quickly. I think I'm going to change my mixing ratio to 10 to 1. Alright, we've already sprayed that. Now this is a single coil, 
that means it's only one row. But if it was a double coil, then I would need to take the top off and I would need to separate one layer from the other. And usually it's held with a couple metal clamps or zip ties and you'd separate the coil and then you'd spray each single coil. All right, now that you've sprayed the whole coil, let it set about 10 minutes. I like the fact that you can use the mixing dial and change the ratio because if you're not careful, I was on that three to one and I used half the bottle in no time. So make sure you pay attention and you test the mixing ratio and figure out what works for you best in the field. Now to rinse off the coil, I'm just gonna disconnect with the quick coupler like this and then spray the coil off. Oh. This coil was pretty dirty. And then you want to make sure that you spray off the drain shield through the drain shield. And that chemical setting on there for a little bit will help to remove some of those stains. Again, you don't want to leave that coil cleaner on the coil uh, too long because then you're going to degrade the coil. Oh, I don't want to lose my tip. For the top, you may want to get a rag and wipe it off. That helps. Now I'm going to spray it from the inside out. I want to make sure that I got every inch of this coil clean. And you can see there's not much soap coming out, there's not much dirt. Sometimes it's a little rough to get inside to wipe it down real good, but it's well worth it. Customer will appreciate it. Makes it washing off the crud a lot easier though. And always wipe off the fan blades. See all this crud right here? Wipe off these fan blades because that crud can cause imbalance and that can aid in the bearings going bad for these motors. And we'll spray those, these blades off and we'll spray the top off after I finish wiping. I'm gonna go get the other side. See all that crud? It comes right off there. Make sure you carry a rag with you for your performed maintenance or your service and cleans. All right. We are going to clean the evaporator coil next. I'll need to reposition the fan. This way. So I can continue wiping. Remember, you want the customer to always want you to clean their unit. You want to be the one who makes the last guy that cleaned it look like he did a bad job. Because you know how to clean it, but he didn't really clean it. Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever used the coil gun. Let me know if you'd recommend it. Let me know your experience. And let me know how you clean units. Now look inside. I'm going to spray these panels off and put it back together. Always check your pressure switch wires. This is the number one cause for shorts on these package units, 24 volt shorts. Make sure they're not touching anything. Make sure you check your TXV and the tubes. Make sure that none of the copper's touching because this is probably the number one spot for leaks. Over time, vibration, copper rubs through copper. So make sure you check it before you put it back together. Now we need to clean the last coil, which is the evaporator coil. Mm, this one's got a slight coating of dust, so it needs to be cleaned. We also need to clean out the drain because drains can get stopped up. So instead of having a pump up sprayer where I add my chemical and then my water, I just take my quick coupler, attach the spray nozzle, and 
I need to do my pre ramp. You see the color of that oil. Spraying this coil off. Man, that looks so much better. It had a slight brown. There's a lot of water that stays inside here. And what you can do is get a shot vac and plug in a shot vac, and you can shot vac this water out. If you don't do that, make sure you at least fill it up and just take that water and dump it out with your hand. That way, at least if you leave water in here, it's clean, clear water that will dry up. But I don't recommend leaving water in here at all. So get a shot back and clean this out. All right. Take my drain loose. Oh. Oh, look at that. There's a bunch of brown stuff in there. If you need to clean an air conditioning coil, check out the coil gun. Link in the description for this product is around $100. Can be used for residential or commercial applications. New Calgon is a leading manufacturer for chemicals used in the HVAC industry and also tools. So go check out their website, link in the description for their website, and link in the description for the coil cleaning products and the coil gun. All right, got my gauges hooked up. I'm gonna plug my disconnect back in. Check the charge, check the amps on all the motors, and make sure that this unit is working in good condition so that I know for sure that I'm not going to have any callbacks. If you end up bending the fins on one of these coils, don't worry. You can get a fin straightening tool and you can straighten the fins on the coil if you bend them. But make sure that you get a fin straightening tool and you straighten the fins out if you do bend them. I'm going to drop a link down in the description to a video of me using a tool to straighten the fins so that you can learn more. Unit's back on, low side pressure is 140, high side pressure is 345. If you wanna learn more about charging equipment using superheat and subcooling, I'm gonna put a link down in the description to a video so you can learn how. If you wanna learn more, check out my playlist HVAC tips for technicians. I've got a bunch of experience in the field as a technician and I've got a bunch of videos for you so that you can learn. Hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you got a question, put that down in the comments because questions can lead to content. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me.